sowing discord amongst the Christians. Romans 16, verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. One of the most satanic things to do here on earth is to cause division amongst the children of God. People who sow discord, people who bring hatred, people who try to make sure there is no love amongst the people of God work for no one else but the devil. We know the different plans of the devil in this world. He wants to make sure that people go to hell. He wants to make sure that people leave the path of righteousness and follow the path of death. For this to happen, he must separate the children of God from God by sowing discord. The devil will always make use of his servants to do this job for him, and that is why anyone who sows discord in the body of Christ, the church, they are not just doing satanic things, they are satanic themselves. You might say that you love everybody and you have not tried to cause division in the church before. You might say you have not sown discord before, but the truth is that you can do this unconsciously. You meant no harm. You may have no plan to cause division, but this act leads to division. We need to be careful with the way we deal with things in the church. We need to be careful so that we are not the agent of the devil causing division without even knowing. One thing that the devil will take advantage of is ignorance. When you don't know about a particular thing that the Bible says about handling some matters, you may do it the wrong way and cause division. The Bible says something about settling a matter or correcting people in different verses. If you do not follow these verses, you might do the wrong thing and cause division. This first is in Matthew 18 verses 15 and 16. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. This is what the Bible asked you to do so that you will not cause division in the church. This is the first one and the second one is in Galatians 6 verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The Bible says you should correct them in meekness. The Bible did not say you should go tell it to another person. The Bible did not say you should go gossip about it. You must correct the person with meekness. There is a reason the Bible added meekness. It takes meekness to convince people about a particular thing. It is meekness that can help you to point out the mistake of someone to them and they will accept it. These are the things that we need to follow. If we are ignorant of these things, the devil will push us to do the things that can cause division and by that we are sowing the seed of discord which is a satanic thing to do. You must know that it is an evil person who will purposely go into the church and try to cause division. It is evil, demonic, and satanic. Proverbs 6 verses 12 to 14 says, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He diviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. The Bible calls them the wicked. You are a wicked man if you sow discord. As Christians, we need to open our eyes and watch out for the people who are around to sow discord. We need to start stopping these people from carrying out their acts. There are different ways people sow discord in the church. These are what we must watch out for so that if anyone is doing this, we must correct them in meekness. False doctrine. This has always been the number one way they sow discord. They bring their idea into the church and plant it in the minds of men and women. They make sure that a larger percentage of the church buy the idea. Many churches are dividing today because someone came to the church, became a pastor in the church, and then started teaching false doctrines. People who find the doctrine interesting will follow. We have the same doctrine, the one that Christ taught us. That is what we must follow. We need to know for sure that when we allow false doctrines, we have allowed the seed of discord. It is just a matter of time that it will grow and yield fruit. What are we allowing in the church today? Are we leaving someone who speaks heresies and teaches false doctrines because they have money? 
Are we allowing these people to continue to sow this seed of discord because we feel they are important in society? Why are we allowing these false doctrines? The Bible called these people wicked. They don't belong to God. Why should they belong to the church? This is exactly why the Bible is against favoritism. James 2 verse 9 But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. You see celebrities attending church and the next thing you know, they are on the pulpit giving a word of encouragement. Just because someone is a movie star or celebrity does not mean that that man or woman is a man of God. I encourage you to know the word of God for yourself. Don't be a Christian that believes everything a person says because he or she is a pastor or because he or she is a celebrity. Believe it only if it matches the Word of God. Know the Word of God for yourself. 2. Gossip If the church ever stops preaching against gossip, they are allowing the devil to get into the church through it. Gossip is a way people sow discord in the church because gossip has the power to turn one against another person. Gossip has the power to bring hatred into the lives of people. Gossip can destroy a church in the twinkling of an eye. Gossip has many other destructive sins in it. There is slandering in gossip. There is backbiting in gossip. There is bitterness in gossip. There is hatred in gossip. And there are many other deadly sins in gossip. This is for you to know how deadly gossip is and how much damage it can bring to a church. If you allow gossip in the church, you are allowing a satanic act. The church will not last. If gossip rules in a church, hatred will always remain in that church. There is a rumor in gossip. Imagine the church spreading rumors about you. Will you be happy with that? Will that not spark hatred in you? That is what gossip can do. 3. Pride Pride is another way they sow discord. Some people just love to be arrogant. They want to be seen as the pillar of the church. They want others to envy them. These people want jealousy to grow in the heart of the church. You may think they are just flaunting their wealth. What you don't know is that they are sowing the seed of discord. Very soon, the church will be filled with pride and that will destroy the church. We all know what follows pride. It is destruction. If a church is filled with pride, you can be sure that it will be destroyed. We may be doing these things or other things that can cause division in the church but we don't know it can. This is the time to check yourself very well and repent. I am telling you this because of the judgment that will come on those that sow discord. This is not something you must joke with. This is not something you will have an excuse for. You cannot say that you are sowing discord unconsciously or because of ignorance. There is no excuse for ignorance. You need to examine yourself and to know the things you have been doing. Are they satanic? What is the punishment for sowing discord? Just one, and it is in Proverbs 6 verses 12 through 15. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He diviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. This judgment will be sudden and decisive. His punishment will be full and irreversible. There is no remedy for the destruction that will come on anyone who sows discord. Before it is too late, you need to ask for forgiveness and get on the right path. The destruction that has no remedy is nothing small. It is a big thing. It will affect the whole area of one's life and it will bring desolation to a life. That life will be full of regrets. It is not that God will not forgive them, but the scar will still be there. If you have a deep cut, you will be healed in a few months, but the scar will remain. You should avoid the destruction. It is better you run from the satanic act today and run to Christ. God bless you. Everyone around you is your neighbor, and you must be ever willing to show love to as many people as possible. The Bible tells us that when Jesus walked on earth, he went about doing good. This is how we also should live. We should be glad to offer help to those who need it. When we walk in love towards people, it will be difficult to sin against them. Would you steal from someone you love? No. When we walk in love, we cannot sin against each other. 
We cannot say we have God and not choose to walk in love. Living a life of love is a proof that God lives in us because God is love. If God dwells in us, it simply means that love dwells in us. Whoever does not know God cannot know love. If you want to know how to walk in love, you need to draw closer to him and let his love permeate your heart. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew 25, verses 35 to 36. When you love God, you will keep His commands. When you love people, you will be at peace with them. Without peace and holiness, no one will see God. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord.